Hello everyone, Catherine here. If you are new to the channel, I have been living full-time on the road for three years, exactly three years. I just celebrated my three-year anniversary yesterday. I lived in a truck camper for the first three years, and now I just purchased this Keystone uh, Springdale 1750RD mini travel trailer. It did come equipped with some solar, 200 watts of solar on the roof. However, I needed to boost up my solar capacity. So that is what we're working on. I also needed to install an inverter. And so that was done in a separate video. If you missed that video, I will go ahead and link it here. You might wanna go back and check that out first. With me today is my friend, Dan, and he is doing all of the work. <laughs> I wanna give credit where credit is due. I'm just lending a hand here and there and I'm very grateful for his help. Today we are going to talk about solar. He will be mounting these two bad boys on the roof in conjunction with the 200 watts of solar that the trailer came with. And I'm going to let him take over now and just talk to you about what's going to happen today. Hello again. Today, as Kat mentioned, we are going to be tackling the, uh, and I have to give her a little credit, she's been very helpful. Uh, but we are going to be tackling the solar install and this is not a technical how-to video. This is a broad brush overview and it's going to have some things, a few things that will be unique to the Keystone Mini series and their solar install, but otherwise everything else applies to any solar install. So what I thought we would do to start is just kind of cover all the bits and pieces that are involved in this instead of doing that as we go through. And then we'll have lots of little segments showing you the actual installation process. The uh, Keystone Springdale Minis, as Kat has, uh, there's a series of them. There's about, uh, I think, six or so floor plans, and they all come with uh, Solar Flex. And the, the, it's new for 2022. The uh, Solar Flex has several different levels, but all the minis come with the basic level, which is called the 200 series or 200 watts of solar. Uh, no inverter, which we already took care of, uh, but the uh, actual solar itself is, there's a 200 watt panel on the roof. And I do wanna talk about a few things that are specific to the Keystone Mini at this point, and then we'll go again, more broad brush. The Solar Flex has a, 200 watt panel that is a, a little unique. It's a 24 volt panel. So if you're gonna add any additional solar, then you need to match up the voltages. And I'm not gonna get into all the details. You need to do the research. I just wanna make you aware, you cannot just purchase any panel off of Amazon or wherever and install it. It will work, but it won't work well. So there are some things that have to be uh, matched to what is already there. Uh, Keystone in their promotional videos and their brochure that I look through, they promote that it's ready to add a second panel. Not so much. The only thing that's ready is the port that's on top of the roof was wired with a big enough gauge wire that you can add a second or even third panel if it's done properly. Uh, but everything else has to be upgraded. And that's what we're gonna talk about as we go through some of the components here and what you, what you need to take into consideration. So the panels that we are installing uh, are two 210 watt panels, uh, in addition to the 200 watt that's uh, already there from Keystone. That will give Kat a total of 620 watts on the roof, which will match nicely to the uh, future planned batteries. The uh, solar panels that are purchased here, again, you have to match up the voltage. So these two panels will be hooked in series, and then these two panels will be paralleled to the existing panel. I don't wanna get any more technical than that, but just so you're aware that there is a very specific way that they need to be connected. Uh, this amount of solar should be perfect for, for what she needs. The Keystone Mini comes with a good quality solar controller. The problem is that it is only large enough for that 200 watt panel that's up there. So if you wanna add any additional panels, you will need to upgrade the solar controller. Uh, what we're gonna use, uh, we're using Renogy products, both for the inverter and the, and the um, uh, solar controller, 
And that's kind of a middle road. Can you get cheaper? Yes. Can you get way more expensive? Absolutely. Renogy is a good product uh, for a, a good price, so the value is there. There are two types of solar controllers, PWM, which is the older, much less efficient style, and MPPT. I'm not going to get into details again, but what you want is an MPPT controller. It gives you a lot of advantages. What we're using is the Renogy 40 amp MPPT controller. It's, uh, the brand or the model is Rover. And this one has a nice feature. It comes with this little dongle that will allow uh, a Bluetooth connection. So you can use an app and you don't have to climb underneath where we're mounting this uh, is often out of the way. Uh, to be able to see the display, you can see all that information on an app on your phone. One thing that's very important is to keep both the inverter, which we did, and the solar controller as close to the batteries as possible. So this will be mounted within about four, four and a half feet of where the batteries are currently located. You need to size the wire properly. And the wire sometimes is included, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not. But for our install, for the full 40 amps, which she will be able to get with her 620 watts of solar, we need to use number eight wire. This is a battery cable or welding cable, sometimes it's referred to, uh, pure copper cable. And then most importantly is to have a way, not only to have a circuit breaker or fuse, but a way to disconnect the solar. Very important that you can disconnect the solar if you need to do maintenance. Most solar controllers, uh, if you disconnect the battery cable, and the, the solar is still connected, it can do damage to the solar controller. So this one is kind of interesting that it's both a circuit breaker, but yet I can press this little button and it acts as a disconnect. So that's a two in one for us. So we would be installing that in line on the positive side. To mount your panels on the roof, you're going to need several items. You're going to need some of these Z brackets. They're in the shape of a Z and they will mount to the solar panels, which we will be doing on the ground. We're gonna do as much as possible on the ground before we get up on the roof. You're going to, I have some stainless steel hardware here. And then these, I don't know if you can see, we'll get a close up for you. Uh, and these are called well nuts. And I have used these with great success on solar installs. Instead of trying to screw the solar panels to the roof with the hardware they provide, which creates a lot of unsealed holes that you have to seal up, we're going to use these. They're rubber and they, as you tighten them, they collapse like a rivet. So not only do they hold very well on the very thin roofs on RVs nowadays, they're very thin. Uh, they'll work on fiberglass roofs, they'll work on rubber roofs, but they also seal out water. In an abundance of caution, we're still gonna cover up uh, all of those screws with a, a sealant, die core, but these are fabulous. I strongly suggest the well nuts. Up here on the roof, 
we got the solar panels installed. Uh, there's again two 210 watt panels in addition to the original 200 watt panel. So that gives her 620 watts total. Because these panels are considered 12 volt panels, these two are wired in series and then paralleled to the existing panel. The prep that Keystone provides, which is nice, is they do put a port on the top of the roof and that port allows you to uh, make the connections and get down to the solar controller and it is wired with 10 gauge wire which will handle about 600 watts of solar. So that part did not have to be modified. Also, we showed you earlier when we went through all the uh, components of what's being installed about the well nuts, which are actually down inside the roof here, and that's how these pan panels are very firmly attached to the roof. They are waterproof, but we're gonna take the extra precaution of putting the die core, which is made specifically for RVs, over all of these. It's uh, in transit to us right now, so that will be put on in the next couple days. Well, we got those solar panels installed on the roof on a very windy day, but we managed to do it. It is a few days later, and there's been a lot of work that's been done. Dan's gotten pretty far along on the project, so I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to him and let him tell you where we're at now. As Kat just mentioned, we're all finished up on the roof and moving on down to installing the other components of the solar system. The panels are wired for the Keystone Mini owners. The... Uh, wiring that was supplied from the roof jacks down to where the uh, existing solar controller was is sufficient to handle a lot more solar so that part uh, we could use everything else will need to be is either added or uh, replaced upgraded so what we have done is installed a, a new solar controller that will handle uh, the 620 watts that she has on the roof and put in safety devices, etc. We're going to show that to you now. All right, we're going to give you an idea of what's involved with uh, upgrading the solar controller and adding in the necessary uh, disconnect and safety components. Uh, if you have not seen the previous video where we installed the inverter, we cover some of the other components that are in here. I'm not going to talk about those this time, so refer back to the previous video. So here we are inside the storage bay where we installed the new Renogy 40 amp solar controller. The previous controller for the Keystone Mini owners is only large enough, it's only 15 amps, so it's only large enough to handle the one 200 amp panel that's there. Luckily we can use the same wiring which comes out right over here that they provided uh, and uh, that is sized appropriately for the number of panels we now have. So this solar controller takes the power from the sun through the solar panels, converts it into the voltage necessary to charge the batteries and goes out through these two wires right here. That's why they're a little bit heavier wires, thicker wires, because it can handle up to a 40 amp charge to the batteries. The other two wires here are what's coming from the solar panels. So that's feeding into this device and these are feeding out and charging the battery couple items to point out here, very important items, is over here you have a disconnect and breaker for the wire going to the battery. You would always put that on the positive side and that does two things. It's safety in case you ever had a short. It also, if I press this button, it trips it open and now I can do maintenance on this without having a live wire. So I like these a lot better than fuses with the exception for an inverter. But everywhere else I like to use these. So we have one here going to the battery. And then over here, we have a 20 amp one sized appropriately for the amps coming from the solar panels. So it's gonna take that 20 amps at a much higher voltage and be able to charge the battery at 40 amps. So here we are out at the batteries. And these are the two wires that are coming from the solar controller, your positive and negative, going to the batteries. This device right here is a shunt that's going to measure the current uh, that's being put in and taken out of the battery, so we always know exactly how much bat usable battery capacity is available. 
There's a lot of other connections here. Inverter, uh, the main 12 volt going to the, uh, all the 12 volt items in the rig, the power jack. And if you wanna see what some of these other things are about, uh, that is again in the inverter video uh, that was done previous to this. All right. Uh, we showed you part of the battery monitor when we uh, showed you the batteries. The shunt is mounted out at the battery and that actually sends the information in to this little monitor right here. This monitor will tell you uh, how much power you're currently using, how much power you have left in the batteries, and most importantly, state of charge. Uh, what percentage of usable capacity that you have. So this monitor right now is set up with the lead acid batteries to work from 100%, which is what it's at right now, down to 50%, since you, you should never go less than 50% on a lead acid battery. Once she gets the lithium batteries, then she can go down to 0%, and that's what's another nice thing about the lithium batteries. This, uh, it's flashing right now because that indicates with the Renogy that it is it has more solar than we're currently using. So you have a net plus on energy right now. This is the, uh, again, just for the ones that didn't watch the previous video, this is the uh, inverter switch, so you can turn off the inverter. One last thing is, I went with the Renogy. I personally have the Victron. The Victron is very expensive. It's uh, well over $200, where this one was $65 or $68. And from what I can see, it's gonna do everything you need to do. So I would suggest the Renogy. Uh, this is a, a no-name version of the Renogy, but they're exactly the same. All right, the solar install is complete, and it is working fantastic. This is something that will allow Cat to live a much more normal life and have uh, some of the things that you take for granted in your home available to her. The solar was tested, what we did to, to test the capacity of it, uh, we actually ran her hair dryer for an extended period of time, and it was even in the morning. It wasn't even uh, noon or solar noon yet, and uh, we were getting 448 watts out of the 620 watts that are on the roof, so that's fantastic. She'll never get the full 620 watts unless she's at the equator on June 21st, but that's why we installed a little extra solar so, so she can actually get somewhere around 500 or 520 watts on a regular basis. I am so incredibly relieved and eternally grateful to Dan for his help getting this solar install completed. I have functioning outlets in the camper and it's imperative that I have power since I'm out boondocking and dry camping so often and I run my business out of my trailer which is editing these YouTube videos for you all. So own the trailer for just over a month and already have this solar dialed in. So thank you so much, Dan. You are welcome. I really appreciate it. Dan did this out of the kindness of his heart. He's a good human. He did it as a favor. He is not for hire, everyone. He is retired, so he's happy to stay that way. <laughs> I also want to send out a huge thank you to the Do It Best Escalante Home Center for their help with letting, you know, helping us getting this project done. They lent us a ladder. They allowed me to receive packages there, and we couldn't have done it without them. They're the only hardware in store in town, so make sure you stop in and say hello and uh, get all your hardware needs taken care of by them here in Escalante. Thank you so much, Dan. Thank you for joining us. Again, if you missed the inverter install video, I will link that here and also link it down below in the description. Make sure you catch that as well, and we'll see you soon. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.